Hi, this is Peter McKenzie with Plastic 411. I'm the owner editor, and you're currently watching the Process Troubleshooting series, one of the videos. I hope you enjoy. If you need help outside of here, say in plant, feel free to contact me via the contact information on the screen at this time. Thanks, and have a great day. So if you're watching this video, evidently you're having some problems with splay. Splay can be a pretty diff tricky defect, but if you take the proper steps, there's a number of ways to identify what kind of splay it is and what the best corrections are. So in this video will go over some of the ways to make corrections and get rid of the problem. So this presentation is going to cover reasons that splay can occur and how to detect root causes. We will also look at methods for identifying and correcting splay conditions. We're going to look at the factor and effect, what critical data best defines changes when addressing splay conditions, and also process solutions, how to effectively make corrections to return to a state of a validated process. So when it comes to root causes, let's first consider the most common causes of splay. We have moisture, shear, and heat. So what are the symptoms? First of all, you have moisture, which is a drooling nozzle, splay all over the part. Purge puddle appears foamy. Parts might be cracking, material too cold to touch. Then under shear, symptoms might be same spot, occurs in the same spot over and over. Or it could be splay all over the part if the temperature is too high. And you can see signs of the compression zone, I mean the center zone overheating. And the tip orifice you should check, make sure it's not bigger than the bushing. Then you have heat. In terms of heat, barrel heats might override the set point. That's a sign. Mount window heats would be too or too high or too low for the SPS. Too high, then basically you end up with the overheating. If they're too low, then you end up with too much shear. You also want to pay attention to the nozzle hot runner transition. When it comes in terms of hot runner temperatures, hot runner is considered to be an extension of the nozzle through the mold. Therefore, the hot runner temperature should be pretty close to what the nozzle temperature is. Then you also have the potential for bad heater bands. This can be tested by taking a piece of plastic and rubbing it on the band to make sure that the plastic melts. If you rub it on the band and the plastic isn't melting at all, then you might have a bad band. So this would be one example of a visual aid where we can look at the part and tell what the potential is for this type of splay. It's generally called silver splay or fireworks splay. And the most common cause for this play is normally moisture and one of the key identifiers of moisture in the process is that visually this play does not occur in the same place every time or like in this case this play is all over the part so silver splay also can be a sign of the heat's being too high so basically if you're overheating the material, then basically the shear is too high. And because of the shear being too high, you end up with this, this appearance. So let's go over some moisture splay specifics. So once the cause for the splay has been identified as moisture, the cause for high moisture content must be verified. Here's a list of reasons moisture splay might be present possible the material is not dried for the time and temperature provided. You need to allow the material more time to dry 
at the correct temperature. Then you're going to want to drain the first 25 pounds from the dryer cone and retry the startup. It's also important to note that use of a moisture analyzer to detect what the actual moisture content is going to be is pretty important. There's also potential that the dryer is not functioning properly. You want to feel the supply and return air lines for the dryer. The supply line going in through the bottom should be hot and then the return coming out the top should be warm. In addition, it's a good practice to have manual temperature indicators with probes installed into the hoses where air enters and exits the dryer. If the supply temperature does not match the set point, or if the return temperature is 20 degrees lower than the set point, there may be a problem with your dryer performance. Next we have shear splay. So the most common cause of shear splay would be heat. And here's some reasons why shear might be the problem and possibly some solutions. So if the temperature transition between the mold and nozzle are too wide, that could lead to the beginning of fill splay. And in this case, you would increase the mold temperature or decrease the nozzle temp to offset the condition. You also might want to consider the gate size. If you're shooting, trying to shoot fast and the gates are too small, this too can lead to shear splay beginning of fill. Something else to look at is mold wear or damage. If there's burrs on features, this can sometimes lead to shear, It'll be light shear. You want to examine the mold for signs of burrs or cracks and details where you're seeing light splay is reoccurring. Some other causes of shear splay might be poor performing or poorly placed thermocouples. Those, those could be in the barrel itself or the hot runner. You could have a crack check ring. You might want to check cushion, make sure that you're not seeing a variance in cushion. Poor venting at the end of fill. If the fill flow front is moving too fast, you can end up with shear and or burning. Now, poor feeding at the feed throat, the best way to analyze this would be to see if you're seeing a difference in screw recovery time. If it's not consistent, then you may not be feeding well. You might increase the rear zones for the feed throat, try to get better feed. Also, if your compression temps, temperatures in the middle zone are too low, you might be breaking the material down too, too quickly, causing shear. Then we have cold suck splay, which often is because the tip freezes off. This could be because you're not, your decomp's too low and you're not sucking back far enough. You end up with a little bit of a drool on the end of the tip, which leads to it freezing off so you shoot a cold slug in the next shot or you could have the decompression position too high meaning that you're sucking back too far and what happens here is you end up sucking air in front of the in front of the shot and that air when it shoots through creates a small cold slug Display. So in conclusion, understanding the effects of moisture, heat, and shear and processing conditions are your best form of defense against splay, defense, splay events. First, you want to investigate what type of splay is being observed. Is it end of fill, beginning of fill, middle of fill? Is it all over the part? This will help to identify what sources might be available as a root cause. 
With the root identified, it becomes much simpler to make necessary adjustments to correct the condition. You need to know whether it's heat related, if it's shear related, or moisture related. Hopefully this helped you with your splay condition. I'd like to thank you for participating in Plastic 411 training programs. If you need in-plant help, some consulting in-plant, or if you're interested in Plastic 401 training programs on the floor using your presses, materials, and molds, feel free to contact me using the information on this page. Thanks again, and happy molding.